The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. This morning, a fight far from over. The fire is just getting closer. The French fire showing its fury as it punishes the Kern River Valley. Very dangerous situation to be in. 17 News has team coverage on this Wednesday, August 25th, 2021. Good morning, good to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen, live here from Fire Camp 9 in Kernville this morning. It was a harrowing night in the Kern River Valley as the French fire exploded. Driving through the area this morning, a Highway 155 is closed as we drove through Wofford Heights. That area of that community that had not been told to evacuate yet was told to get out last night. That entire community evacuated um, as the fire crept towards homes in that area and firefighters rushed to protect lives structures. The smoke is so thick there right now as we drove through and it's just hanging like a heavy fog over Lake Isabella this morning. Um, we have not gotten a clearer picture yet since it was so dark when we drove through of what remains standing and what buildings, what homes were burned down last night. But we do expect to get an update from fire crews in about an hour. Yeah, and this fire was very active overnight and it is still on the move this morning, like Maddie said. Let's first show you a live picture of the flames this morning and you can see the flames glow in the distance as the blaze quickly moves closer to homes. Here's a look at new video from overnight showing the ferocity of those flames. Last night, Mother Nature flexed her muscle once again as it unleashed a brutal attack on several communities, including Wofford Heights. Witnesses describe a chaotic scene as firefighters, sheriff's deputies, and CHP rush to evacuate residents while strong winds push the fire toward their homes. It is still unknown this morning how much damage the fire left behind. As one fire official described it, only today's daylight will reveal what the fire's destructive energy has done. Here is what you need to know about the fire at this hour. The French fire has grown to more than 19,000 acres and it is only 19% contained. Officials say more than 7,000 people are under evacuation warnings, and that number could go higher as the fire's path changes. Team coverage from the Kern River Valley. 17's Marco Torres is live from Camp 9, where fire crews have set up their main base of operations. He'll have more on what exactly went wrong yesterday and the fire spread through the region. And 17's Christian Galeno is at Woodrow Wallace Elementary School, where the American Red Cross has set up an evacuation center. He'll be joining us with more just a bit on those who were forced to flee as the flames quickly moved in. But All right, Kev, thanks so much. A very busy forecast for sure. All right, let's head back out to 17's Maddie Jansen live at Camp 9 this morning, where officials are expected to provide an update in about an hour. Maddie. Yeah, that's right, Alex. Uh, as I said earlier, we're at Fire Camp 9, which is in Kernville. Of course, last night, as we just mentioned, the community of Kernville was put on an evacuation warning. So they're standing by in case this fire uh, continues to move more toward this direction uh, right now, just on standby. Conditions are really calm right now. However, that was not the case yesterday. 17's Marco Torres has been out here covering the fire all week, and he joins me now uh, with what went wrong yesterday afternoon. Marco. Well, Manny, I just really want to tell you that the fire pretty much devastated the Wasco community. I'm sorry, the uh, Wofford Heights community. Now, the fire really just pushed into uh, the community itself, and it sent people into a panic once this emergency evacuation began. The French fire burned through the western part of the Wofford Heights community Tuesday evening. At first, it was like a scene from a post-apocalyptic nightmare. You're on a volcano, and everywhere you turn, patches of fire blaze in the slowly transitioning twilight. One patch inched its way to a garage where it ignited and decimated the entire structure, including the car inside. We spoke with Sean Collins from French Fire Information about how the fire took this dramatic turn. Weather. Weather has been the predominance of this fire. The fire was working with us, and then the wind came up and pushed it in directions, I guess, that uh, wasn't really expected. And, and the main part was really that it started to spot in front of itself, and then it spotted across the road, across 155, and then as that wind pushed it, 
you know, it, it just carried on going. Collins says the fire is headed northeast towards Kernville, which could also get mandatory evacuation orders anytime soon if the fire makes major movement. Yes, it's possible. Everything's possible with, you know, the, the, the severe situation that we continue to see uh, escalating. Right now, it's calm. Right now, the fire up on the mountainside uh, is, is reduced. All right, and Marco, I know you said as you drove through the area last night, you could see the flames on the hillside there in Wofford Heights, but you said fire crews were doing a really good job of protecting structures. Yeah, Maddie, so I was the very first person here in Wofford Heights uh, to make it from 17 News, and it was an amazing uh, event from what I saw from fire crews. They were protecting the homes. Some homes were catching on fire, but the fire crews immediately got on scene, doused them out, and put security lines around it to make sure that uh, the homes were safe. And from what I could see, there were very few structures that burned. At most, there was only one car garage that actually did burn, and that was the only thing I did see. All right, that would certainly be incredible uh, being that there are a lot of homes in the area up there um, and so really daylight is going to be what's going to tell us. Marco, thank you so much. And as those evacuation orders, more of those rolled in last night, residents scrambled to find safety, many of them turning to the American Red Cross shelter. 17's Christian Galeno is live from one of those shelters this morning with details on those evacuation orders. Christian. Maddie, well, it's a very difficult morning for a lot of the families that had to wake up in one of the cots here at the American Red Cross shelter. It's quite the difficult morning as well for the community of Walford Heights, who was the latest community to be evacuated, asked to bring only the essentials and leave the rest behind. Called me and said that they're finally evacuating Wilford Heights due to the fire being so close. We knew that the evacuations were coming. As imminent danger loomed over Wofford Heights, those that call it home were rushed out. Many left with nowhere else to go. Everybody's thinking of somewhere, where, where should I go? Because, you know, it's limited places you can go if you don't have any friends that are able to take you in that live in a a safe area, please come here. We'll take good care of you. The American Red Cross has opened two shelters, one at Woodrow Wilson Elementary, the other at Kern River Valley High. We'll come to the door and they'll say, can I see inside? We say yes. They said, wow, like this is really nice. And we said, of course it's nice. We're the American Red Cross and we're going to take good care of you. And pets are welcome. We had a lady that ch checked in with her two cats and she wasn't sure that things were going to go well. And she came back, she said, Oh my gosh, my cats have never stayed in something so nice as what's provided here. So she was very, very happy with that. It's an effort to welcome those into a safe space in hopes that they will soon return home. As far as we know right now, my mom is uh, home should be saved. She's in an area on the lakeside of Tilly Creek, so she should be fine. Comfort. We're giving you comfort and care just like you were a family member. And for details on where you can find the shelters, as well as what you are recommended to bring to the shelters, if you are headed to one of them, you can find them on our website, KGT.com. You can also find the COVID-19 protocols that are being taken inside of these shelters. Reporting from Lake Isabella, 17 News, Christian Galeno. Maddie, back to you. All right, Christian, thank you so much. And as he just mentioned, the American Red Cross has expanded its evacuation center since the first one reached capacity. They've expanded to parts of Kern Valley High School. The center at the adjacent Woodrow Wallace School reached its 30 person maximum capacity, requiring that expansion. Evacuees are invited to go to Kern Valley High School for a safe place to stay, free meals, and of course support. As we mentioned earlier, here are some travel advisories. Highway 155 is closed from Glenville, just east of Alta Sierra due to the French fire. Caltrans says there's no definitive time frame for reopening. Road closures in the area also include Nelly Dent Drive to Highway 155, Old State Road to one and a half miles west of Highway 155, and Sawmill Road at Highway 155. Uh, Highway 155 was also closed uh, between the entrance to Wofford Heights and Kernville this morning as we drove through.
The Kern County Fire Department plans to hold another virtual meeting on the French fire this evening. This is the third one they've held since last Wednesday. That begins at 6 p.m. and you can watch it live on our KGET Facebook page and our website KGET.com. To see all of our fire coverage, including up to the minute updates on evacuation orders, you can head to our website KGET.com. And as we've been mentioning, we are expecting that live update, a briefing here at 6 a.m. at Fire Camp 9. We will, of course, uh, keep you posted and bring you all of the latest information from that. Alex. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back. Your time now is 528, and nearly 9 in 10 American adults say they have experienced price increases since the beginning of the year. A new inflation survey out this morning from Bankrate finds two-thirds report these increases have negatively impacted their personal financial situation. The top categories consumers are experiencing the most sticker shock, groceries, gas, and restaurants. Now to the French fire as the, uh, you know, it continues to grow and 17's Maddie Jansen is live this morning in the Kern River Valley at Camp 9. Now that's where a lot of firefighters from across the state have converged to try to figure out how to battle this flame, uh, this fire because those flames very intense. Maddie. Yeah, they certainly are. And as you mentioned just a little bit ago, Alex, we're getting ready for a briefing. It's about 30 minutes away. Uh, you can see over my left shoulder, though, here that they're setting up the big map um, that they will use to talk about the fire lines. And, you know, we've been telling you the acreage 19,000. Of course, that was before last night, and we do know there was a lot of fire activity last night. Um, I was speaking with some firefighters uh, just a few minutes ago, and they said what's kind of bizarre about this fire is that it's growing in all directions. So even as it was closing in on the community of Wofford Heights, last night. It was still growing over the backside of the mountain as well. Um, so of course it will be until daylight when we get a better picture of what kind of damage and how many homes were lost, if any, in the Wofford Heights location. But again, the remaining residents of Wofford Heights were told to get out last night to evacuate. And as those evacuation orders rolled in, many of them turned to the American Red Cross. All right, Christian, thank you so much. Coronavirus continues to take advantage of Kern's low vaccination rate. Public Health reported 442 new cases yesterday. No new deaths were reported, but we have lost 1,448 people since March 2020. Hospitals are still filling up with sick patients as 243 people are dealing with more severe symptoms. 45 are in the ICU. By now, many of us have become numb to coronavirus and its deadly effects especially if you're someone who is young and doesn't have pre-existing conditions. But one local woman who did not receive the vaccine recorded videos of herself in the hospital, encouraging others to get the shot. Should have definitely got that vaccine. That is Nina Martin. She died from COVID-19 in Bakersfield 11 days ago. She was 53 years old with no underlying conditions. Her family is now carrying her message about the importance of getting vaccinated. She did not have any underlying issues. She was healthy. She was active. Uh, she was always out doing things. Unvaccinated people have very strong voices. They will let you know not to get vaccinated. They will let you know all the reason. And I'm begging people that are vaccinated, get stronger voices. Let's get a stronger voice. Let's be more forceful in our voices because these are our loved ones we're talking about. If you have a tonight on 17 news at five hear Nina Martin's story as the plea from her family as they deal with the immense pain of losing a loved one to a disease that now has a vaccine. Dozens of parents, students and community members protested outside the Bakersfield City School Board meeting last night. The district, like many others, requires students to wear face coverings indoors on campus, and the group let the board know they don't agree with it. Parents and their supporters say it's not up to the district to decide what students should do. It's important for me to be here to speak up for the kids. The kids have rights. Um, the parents have rights to choose whether their kids wear masks, whether they get vaccinated, and so do the employees. You have a choice to have an abortion. I have a choice to run my own medical. Teachers and employees should have a choice to either get the vac, not to get the vac. It's a free choice. California is the first state in the nation to require all teachers and school staff to get vaccinated or undergo weekly COVID-19 testing. 
In other education news this morning, the Bakersfield Fire Department and Dignity Health are partnering with the Kern County Superintendent of Schools Office for a September 11th essay contest. Students in grades 9 through 12 can write us and submit an essay explaining why it is so important for U.S. citizens to remember the attack and honor the victims. The winning essay will receive a $1,000 scholarship and will be featured at the 9-11 Memorial in Southwest Bakersfield. Essays are due no later than 5 p.m. next Monday, August 30th. If you would like to submit an entry, just visit KGET.com and click on the hot link icon. Today, KGET is teaming up with Blessing Corner Ministries. The church has until the end of the month to raise enough money to stay in its current location. Today, the Blessing Corner will be offering $30 and $50 platters that serve one to two people, complete with barbecue ribs, hot links, side dishes, and their famous lemon cake that you see right there. It is happening at their location on Union Avenue from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Welcome back. Six days. That's how long U.S. forces now have to get potentially tens of thousands of people out of Afghanistan after President Biden announced he will stand by his deadline to get U.S. forces out of the country by the end of the month. A decision, like so much of what's happened in the region, is getting real pushback this morning. NBC's Jay Gray has more from Washington. Alex, good morning. World leaders and lawmakers from both parties had urged the president to extend the deadline. But citing growing threats and the stepped-up pace of evacuations, President Biden says it stands for now, though he does acknowledge it's still a very fluid situation. Transport flights are leaving the Kamal Airport every 45 minutes now. In 24 hours, more than 21,000 people have been evacuated. We are currently on a pace to finish by August the 31st. The sooner we can finish, the better. President Biden standing by his deadline for U.S. forces to leave Afghanistan, acknowledging there are growing terror threats targeting the evacuation mission. Every day we're on the ground is another day we know that ISIS-K is seeking to target the airport and attack both U.S. and allied forces and innocent civilians. But after a classified briefing on the situation, Republicans and some within his own party worry six days isn't enough time to get everyone out. It's hard for me to imagine all of that can be accomplished between now and the end of the month. He will have blood on his hands. People are going to die and they're going to be left behind. Satellite images show the crowds that continue to gather around the airstrip. Chaos there and the constant pressure of Taliban fighters on most every street corner in the capital city, making it difficult and the Pentagon says at times dangerous for thousands of stranded Americans to get to the airport. It's a tenuous situation. We already had some uh, gunfighting break out. We run a serious risk of it breaking down as time goes on. Another reason the president says he's sticking to his deadline while also asking advisors to prepare contingency plans to stay longer if necessary. Now, another factor in all of this, the Taliban's warning that there would be consequences if the deadline was extended. Leaders also now saying publicly, and I'm quoting here, we are not in favor of allowing Afghans to leave. In Washington, Jay Gray, 17 News. Making headlines around the state now this morning, a small plane made an emergency landing on a San Diego freeway yesterday. Take a look at this incredible video. The surprising sight occurred on southbound Interstate 5 near Del Mar. It is still not clear why the pilot landed on the freeway, but the driver whose car broke the aircraft's fall says she's relieved that everyone is okay. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just like in shock still. This doesn't feel like it was real. and. Not, it's our anniversary today, so it's not how I expected our anniversary to go, but I mean, we're, we're grateful that we're both alive and good. No injuries have been reported, but some motorists said they'll get checked out by doctors after being exposed to airplane fuel. Welcome back to your 17 Crime Watch. An 18-year-old man has been arrested in connection with a murder earlier this month. Bakersfield police say James Randall was taken into custody on Monday on South M Street arrested for the murder of 46-year-old Terry Larray Heron. Heron and one other person were found early morning August 11th in the area of Tyree Tolliver and East 3rd Streets in East Bakersfield, both suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. Heron died at the scene. The other victim, who has not been identified, was taken to the hospital for treatment. Randall was booked into custody on suspicion of murder, gang participation, and aggravated assault. He's due in court later today. 
Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.